tomorrow does not arrive on May 25th, 2073. Fact or fiction? This may appear to be an absurd assertion, but it cannot be refuted until that date occurs. But why? Why do we think it sounds absurd? This is an example of the induction problem in which we rely on previous observations to anticipate the future. It cannot be guaranteed that these predictions will always be correct. We assume that the sun will rise every morning, that drop things will fall to the earth, and that the laws of physics will apply. Can we, however, depend on these assumptions? Can we be assured that what we see now will continue to be true tomorrow or in the far future? This is the essence of the induction problem, a philosophical dilemma that has perplexed philosophers for ages. Bertrand Russell, the famous mathematician and logician, was unable to solve it. However, Russell asked an interesting question. How do we know that the future will be like the past? Then, he gave some examples to explain his thoughts. Imagine you had a pet turkey. You feed it every day, and it grows bigger and happier as a result. The turkey begins to believe that it will be fed and cherished every day by its owner. The turkey has developed a theory. Every day, my owner will come to feed me. But one day, when the turkey least expects it, the owner comes and takes its life for Thanksgiving dinner. The turkey's theory is destroyed since it was based on previous observations but ignore the potential of a different outcome. And black holes are the best example to illustrate the problem of induction. Namely, the problem of information loss in black holes. You must have heard that everything that falls into a black hole disappears without a trace. However, this contradicts the laws of quantum mechanics. Yes, yes, the same quantum mechanics that played a role in the development of semiconductors. They are used in all kinds of gadgets that we use every day, like smartphones, computers, cars, and others. Thanks to them, you can now watch this video on YouTube. So, what's wrong with black holes? Let's understand everything in order. Black holes are one of the most interesting and mysterious things in the universe because they can bend space and time and their event horizon beyond which nothing can escape. At first glance, Black holes look like something out of a science fiction story. But black holes can be considered one of the simplest objects in the universe because they are described by just one parameter, mass. Two uncharged, non-rotating black holes with the same mass are exactly the same. It's like if you have a ton of iron and a ton of turtles, and you weigh them both, they would weigh the same amount, right? Well. It's the same with black holes. However, not everything is so simple, because the properties of black holes are rather strange. While uncharged and non-rotating black holes are described by just one parameter, there are other types of black holes that have more complex properties. Charged black holes, for example, have an electric charge that creates an electromagnetic field around them. Rotating black holes, on the other hand, have a property called angular momentum that causes them to drag space-time around with them. Furthermore, the event horizon is the region around a black hole when gravity is so powerful that nothing can escape. Once anything exceeds the event horizon, it is dragged inexorably into the singularity of the black hole, a point of infinite density where the rules of physics as we know them break down. Even though Einstein's theory of general relativity predicted black holes in 1915, it wasn't until the late 1960s that astronomers began to uncover evidence that they exist in the cosmos. One of the first black holes ever discovered was called Cygnus X1. Scientists found it while observing a brilliant star in the constellation Cygnus that appeared to be circling an unseen object of incredible mass. This object was so massive that it could only be a black hole. To detect it, scientists studied the effects of their gravitational pull on nearby matter and detected X-rays emitted as matter fell into a black hole. But everything has changed since April 10, 2019. One of the most mysterious phenomena in the universe has been photographed for the first time. The Event Horizon Telescope 
an international partnership of over 200 scientists from across the world took the image. This astounding accomplishment ushered in a new age in astrophysics, allowing scientists to study black holes in more depth than ever before. They could now witness the impact of a black hole's gravity on its surroundings and put Einstein's theory of general relativity to the test. But what exactly are black holes? To understand black holes, we must first comprehend the idea of gravity. Gravity is a basic force in the universe that causes masses to attract one another. The greater an object's mass, the stronger its gravitational attraction. When a huge star runs out of fuel and collapses under its own weight, it creates an area of space with such a powerful gravitational pull that nothing, not even light, can escape. This is referred to as the event horizon, or the point of no return. When an item goes through the event horizon, it is said to have crossed the event horizon, and it is unavoidably drawn towards the singularity, which is the point of infinite density and zero volume at the core of the black hole. A black hole's gravitational pull is so powerful that it warps the fabric of space-time around it. The event horizon's boundary denotes the no-escape zone of the black hole, commonly known as the Schwarzschild radius. Anything that crosses this boundary is irreversibly dragged into the black hole and lost for all time. So, where exactly do we obtain all of this knowledge about black holes? In 1783, British mathematician and geologist John Mitchell was the first to postulate the presence of dark stars. He predicted that a star may be so massive that its gravity would be so intense that light would be unable to escape. He went on to speculate that these dark stars may exist in great numbers in our galaxy. A few years later, in 1796, the French mathematician Pierre Simon Laplace reached a similar conclusion. He proposed that a star may collapse in on itself, forming a massive and compact object from which not even light could escape the gravitational attraction. To characterize these hypothetical objects, Laplace invented the term dark body. It's amazing to realize that these theoretical predictions were made more than two centuries ago with no direct observable proof. Nonetheless, they were astonishingly accurate in modeling the behavior of black holes. Later, the year 1915 was pivotal in the history of science. It was the year in which Albert Einstein developed the theory of general relativity, which changed our view of the cosmos. This theory offered the mathematical basis for understanding the nature of black holes, which were at the time only a speculative concept. General relativity is Einstein's theory that defines the link between space and time, matter and gravity. According to the theory, massive objects distort space-time, forcing objects to move along curved pathways. This warping effect is what we sense as gravity's force. It was not until the 1960s that the concept of black holes was truly embraced largely due to the work of physicist John Wheeler. In 1967, he coined the term black hole, which is now commonly used to refer to these mysterious objects. Wheeler's work on black holes did not stop there. He also proposed the concepts of a wormhole, a hypothetical shortcut through space-time that could potentially allow for faster-than-light travel. While wormholes remain a topic of speculation and debate among physicists, they continue to inspire popular imagination and have appeared in numerous works of science fiction. Over the next several decades, astronomers continued to search for evidence of black holes in the universe. In 1971, astronomer David Finkelstein proposed that black holes could emit radiation, which would later be called Hawking radiation, after physicist Stephen Hawking, who independently predicted the phenomenon in 1974. Hawking radiation suggests that black holes are not entirely black, as previously thought, but instead emit a type of radiation as a result of quantum effects near the event horizon. The discovery of Hawking radiation revolutionized our understanding of black holes and their behavior. It also raised new questions, such as how black holes could lose mass over time due to this radiation. It is still an active area of research today and has led to further developments in our understanding of quantum gravity and the nature of space-time. In addition to the discovery of Hawking radiation, 
Astronomers have also identified numerous examples of black holes in the universe. In 1971, Cygnus X1 became the first black hole candidate to be identified based on its interaction with a companion star. In the 1990s, powerful telescopes and observatories, like the Hubble Space Telescope and the Chandra X-ray Observatory, detected numerous quasars, which are believed to be powered by supermassive black holes in the centers of distant galaxies. In the same decade, Sagittarius A asterisk was discovered in the center of the Milky Way galaxy using the same powerful telescopes and ground-based observatories that utilize infrared and radio wavelengths. One of the most intriguing elements of Sagittarius A asterisk is its enormous gravitational attraction, which is strong enough to hold stars in orbit around it. This has resulted in the discovery of a group of stars known as S-stars that orbit the black hole. These stars move at incredible rates and have revealed important information about the nature of Sagittarius A asterisk and the environment in its neighborhood. In 2018, astronomers made a groundbreaking discovery using some of the most powerful telescopes on the planet, the Very Large Telescope and the Atacama Large Millimeter slash Submillimeter Array, ALMA. They discovered the most massive black hole known to date, located in a quasar named TOM618. Quasars are among the brightest objects in the universe, and their centers are fueled by supermassive black holes. The black hole at TON618 has a mass roughly 66 billion times that of our Sun, making it one of the universe's most massive objects. More black holes have been discovered, but I will not bore you with listing all of them here. So far, we only know about 20 black holes that have been discovered, although according to the results of computer simulations, there may be about 20 million of them. Impressive, really. So let's go back. Where do we get the knowledge about black holes? And what is the difficulty in their research? The difficulty to directly observe a black hole has long been a scientific puzzle. It has intrigued physicists and astronomers for decades, and we're only now starting to uncover some of the mysteries of a black hole's inner workings. However, scientists have discovered indirect methods of detecting their existence. Assume you're playing hide-and-seek with your younger cousin. You know they're hiding somewhere in the room, but you can't find them because they've hidden themselves very well. Black holes are similar to that mysterious relative. They are hidden in the vastness of space, and we can't see them since they don't release any visible light or radiation. It's similar to when you eventually hear your cousin laugh or accidentally bump into something, revealing their whereabouts. Scientists apply the same concept to black holes. They are interested in the impact of black holes on matter and light. They can, for example, identify stars orbiting an unseen object, most likely a black hole. They may also see the bending of light as it approaches a black hole resulting in a distorted picture. Even though we can't view black holes directly, these indirect approaches give substantial proof for their existence. They are helped in this. The Chandra X-ray Observatory, Hubble Space Telescope, and Spitzer Space Telescope, in particular, have supplied critical data regarding black holes and their surroundings. These telescopes are capable of detecting X-rays, visible light, and infrared radiation allowing astronomers to examine many aspects of black hole activity. That is, the study of black holes is a combination of theoretical physics, astronomical observations, and computer simulations. Theoretical physicists employ mathematical models to predict the behavior of black holes, whereas astronomers observe the impact of black holes on their surroundings. However, owing to recent technological advances, we can now witness black holes firsthand. In 2019, the Event Horizon Telescope, a global network of telescopes, captured the first ever snapshot of a black hole. It's like finally finding your tiny relative in their hiding place and seeing them with your own eyes. Now let me explain what the snapshot truly depicted. Consider a dark, round emptiness encircled by a dazzling ring of light. The dark emptiness represents a black hole, while the brilliant ring represents an accretion disk which is a swirling mass of hot gas and dust being drawn into the black hole's gravity well. This snapshot demonstrates the immense strength of black holes and provides an intriguing peek into the inner workings of the universe. That's quite impressive. 
But let's talk about the Gaia mission, one of the most ambitious and exciting space missions in recent years. Launched in 2013 by the European Space Agency, ESA, Gaia's main goal is to map the Milky Way in unprecedented detail. And that's not all. Thanks to Gaia's incredible precision, we have already discovered some fascinating information about black holes in our galaxy. In 2020, scientists using Gaia data discovered six mysterious stars that seem to be orbiting around black holes. This is a big deal because it suggests that these kinds of black hole systems are more common than previously thought. Scientists have observed such systems for the first time and have opened up a whole new area of research. However, the challenge now is to detect more of these systems, which is difficult given their wide orbits. The good news is that Gaia is still gathering data, and its next release, scheduled for 2025, will include many more of these stars with mysterious black hole companions. Therefore, please go ahead and subscribe so as not to miss out on any updates and learn more about black holes in the universe. By the way, the discovery of black holes with companion stars by the Gaia mission means that it is possible that many potentially habitable planetary systems could orbit around these black holes. Sounds like fantasy, right? But what if I told you that black holes not only destroy everything in their path? Black holes have a really bad reputation, as their massive gravity can suck in and destroy anything that comes too close, including stars, planets, and entire galaxies. The formation and evolution of galaxies, however, is also significantly influenced by black holes. A scientist named Ichiro Kokubu from the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan discovered that black holes have a lot more gas and dust in their accretion disks than the typical disks around stars. This extra matter has the potential to create a large number of baby planets, a lot of them of a larger scale. And furthermore, black holes at their near distances are more efficient for emergence of planet seeds, the so-called planetesimals, which are snowballs generated by matter accumulating around a dense core. Planetesimals are really created more efficiently by black holes than by protoplanetary disks around stars. For anyone who does not know, protoplanetary disks are the remnants of the gas and dust that were left over after the formation of a star. Normally, when a planet is forming around a star, it must overcome several obstacles. If a planetesimal collects too much mass, it may begin to migrate towards the star and be torn apart by its gravitational forces. However, if this identical process occurs in a black hole's accretion disk, the chance of decay is reduced because the orbital velocity of the disk is so great that it can pick up the planetesimal's core and prevent it from falling into the black hole. Another concern with planet formation is star radiation, which can hinder the process in the colder portions of the protoplanetary disk where planets form. However, black holes have a thick outer layer of gas and dust that can shield a planet from harmful radiation. All of these considerations add up to the possibility of planets 10 times the mass of Earth forming around black holes. To avoid being ripped apart, these planets would most likely be positioned roughly 10 light years distance from the black hole itself. Scientists believe that black holes may contain millions of planets around them. Who knew? Black holes could be such a breeding ground for planets, but even more interesting than you might think. Astrophysicist Sean Raymond of the Bordeaux Observatory in France has claimed that life around black holes could potentially thrive. It all boils down to the habitable zone, which is a region of space surrounding a star where liquid water may exist on the surfaces of planets. There is just one planet in our sun's habitable zone, Earth. However, Raymond claims that five more planets could conveniently neighbor Earth in theory, such as the planetary system Trappist 1 in the constellation of Aquarius, which has three Earth sized planets within its habitable zone. The mass and size of black holes determine their habitable zones. Black holes are the most massive space objects known in the universe and are incredibly compact. A black hole with the mass of the Sun would be barely six kilometers wide or about 10 times the length of Broadway in New York City. Even if the Sun had an equal mass black hole partner circling nearby, life on Earth would not alter significantly, 
save that our planet would suffer from a lack of light when the sun was veiled from time to time by its black hole. Now, consider a possible black hole one million times the mass of the sun. Raymond calculated that 550 Earth mass planets might fit in stable orbits within such a black hole's habitable zone. However, the only method to truly protect life within a black hole's habitable zone is to position stars between it and planets. A ring of nine sun-like stars, a half an astronomical unit from the black hole, according to Raymond, would make each of the 550 Earth mass planets potentially habitable. To fit around 550 planets in the habitable zone, the distance between them would be negligible, approximately twice the Earth-Moon distance, and each planet's nearest neighbor would appear in the sky approximately twice the size of the full moon. The nine suns orbiting the black hole every three hours would be spectacular. That implies that every 20 minutes, one of the suns would pass behind the black hole, no matter which way one looked at it. Furthermore, the black hole's gravity would stretch starlight, making stars closest to the black hole look redder, and those further away appearing bluer. Raymond also calculated the number of potentially habitable planets that may exist if they were positioned as close together as possible. In this situation, 400 orbits of 2,500 planets would be required. The model would require significantly more light sources as the number of planets rose. As a result, Raymond proposes not nine suns, but up to 36, which each planet of a million lighted from all sides by starlight. Such calculations may seem absurd, yet the future of mankind may be dependent on them. And it opens up intriguing prospects for space exploration. And it may seem that black holes are not so dangerous. But what if a black hole somehow appeared near our planet? Have you ever heard of Planet Nine? This hypothetical planet is thought to be located at the outer edges of our solar system, and scientists have been searching for it for years. But what if it's not a planet at all? What if it's actually a primordial black hole? That's the idea proposed by two scientists, Jacob Schultz and James Unwin, in 2019. They suggested that instead of a planet, there could be a small black hole of the same mass lurking on the outskirts of our solar system. Primordial black holes, which are small but extremely dense objects that might occur anywhere in the universe, Imagine a tiny bead, smaller than a grain of sand, but with the mass of an elephant. That's what a primordial black hole would be like. A small, but incredibly dense object. These black holes are like cosmic hobos, wandering around the universe without a specific home, and they could be anywhere, including our own solar system. They're like the ultimate hide-and-seek champions, almost impossible to detect. And yet, they could be lurking right under our noses. But why do scientists think that there might be a black hole there? Well, one reason is that despite years of searching, no one has been able to find any evidence of Planet Nine. But another reason is that primordial black holes are thought to have formed shortly after the Big Bang, and they could be floating around in our galaxy, waiting to be discovered. So far, the idea that Planet Nine could be a primordial black hole is a controversial hypothesis, but one that intrigues many scientists. But suppose that happened, and a black hole appeared next to Earth. What happens next? To begin with, it would be simply impossible to predict the appearance of a black hole near the Earth. Unlike in Hollywood, the sky would not darken, and there would be no black disk on the horizon. Black holes are called black for a reason. They don't emit any light. So, if a black hole did happen to come near us, we wouldn't be able to see it at all, and it would be very sudden. If a black hole appeared near Earth, its gravitational attraction would begin to harm the planet and everything in its vicinity. The black hole would initially attract surrounding objects, and over time, it may drag in the Earth itself. The black hole's strong gravitational pull would also force time to slow down near it, implying that time on Earth would move far more slowly than time elsewhere in the universe. The discrepancy in time would become more evident as the Earth got closer to the black hole. For example, if a planet's path to a black hole took only a few minutes, on Earth, this would turn into hours, days, even months or years, depending on the effect of the gravity. We wouldn't know the difference. However, 
If an outside observer were present, they would witness the planet shifting quickly. Perhaps millions of years of evolution would pass in a flash for this person. As the black hole's event horizon approaches, tidal forces become active due to its strong gravitational field. But what's really interesting is that these forces are unevenly distributed. For example, if you fell into a black hole with your feet first, your feet would experience more gravity than your head. Result? You would stretch like spaghetti. It's hard to imagine what this would look like on a planetary scale, but it's easier to visualize on a personal level. Your hands would be pulled in a different direction than your feet, and you'd be stretched out in a matter of seconds. Ultimately, falling into a black hole is like experiencing the apocalypse. The tidal forces of the gravitational field would turn you, rivers and lakes, forests and the entire planet into atomic strands. And then, the singularity will divide it all literally into nothing. You will be torn apart at the atomic level. Your body and everything else around you will turn into pure energy. The strength of the tidal forces depends on the mass of the black hole. For a black hole formed from the collapse of a large mass star, the effects of these forces will be felt a few hundred kilometers from the event horizon. But for supermassive black holes, the effects could be felt thousands or even millions of kilometers away. When it comes to ultramassive black holes, the spaghettification rules are a little different. Tidal forces near the event horizon of an ultramassive black hole are actually weaker than those surrounding smaller black holes. This means you won't notice excessive stretching and tearing until you dive deep into a black hole. The thought of an ultramassive black hole devouring the Earth may sound like science fiction, but it is a very real scenario. Do you remember the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy? Yes, the same Sagittarius A asterisk that I spoke about earlier. And so, we are gradually approaching it. But do not worry, millions of years will pass before the collision. But what would happen if we were to collide with such a behemoth? As I said, the consequences will be gradual, not immediately catastrophic. But eventually, the Earth will be consumed by the black hole's massive gravitational pull. And if we didn't perish before crossing the event horizon, we would have to contend with the extreme conditions inside the black hole. As the Earth gets closer to the black hole, it will experience increasingly violent and frequent tremors. Cities will begin to collapse, tsunamis will ravage the coasts, and volcanoes will erupt, including those that have been dormant for centuries. The explosion of Yellowstone will be especially epic, right? It's almost impossible to survive under such conditions. If the Earth were to collide with a black hole with a mass of 66 billion suns, an enormous amount of energy will be released. Scientists estimate it to be around 32 decillion megajoules, or 32 followed by 33 zeros. That's equivalent to 500 septillion atomic bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima. The results would be catastrophic, and the Earth would turn to ash. If the Earth were to fall into a supermassive black hole, the other planets in our solar system would follow with it. The entire solar system would be obliterated, as would all of the planets. The black hole would eventually continue to grow, swallowing more and more matter. It would almost certainly have swallowed up our sun, leaving behind nothing but a huge dark abyss. It's amazing to realize the power of these space monsters, isn't it? Black holes were always thought to be destructive and harmful, but a new study conducted by astronomer Manaswi Lingam revealed some unexpected benefits. It turns out that black holes could be potential hotspots for life in the universe. The researchers discovered that the habitable zone near a black hole, where planets might be able to support life, is far closer than previously imagined. The safe distance for life to thrive begins at merely 140 light years for a black hole equivalent in size to Sagittarius A asterisk, which is 3,060 light years closer than what was thought in the 1980s. This means that thousands of undiscovered worlds could be flourishing right now in the orbits of a black hole. But what distinguishes these habitable zones near black holes? It turns out that the extreme ultraviolet radiation surrounding black holes may actually break down molecules and form life-sustaining substances like proteins, lipids, and DNA. This radiation can also encourage photosynthesis, which is the process by which plants manufacture oxygen using light. Indeed, 
some bacteria are known to form a protective biofilm that shields them from damaging radiation, and they may even be able to adapt to high amounts of radiation, suggesting that life near a black hole is already thriving. So, picture this. Instead of our scorching sun, we have a cold black hole. Surprising, right? Turns out, a black hole's temperature is actually absolute zero, unless gas and other substances fall into it, overheat, and glow, creating a disk around it. The size of the black hole matters too. Thomas Apartney and his team from Palaki University in the Czech Republic found that a planet the size of Earth, orbiting a black hole the size of the Sun, would only be able to harness about 900 watts of usable power, barely enough for short-term survival as the extreme cold and lack of light would wipe out most plants and animals. However, hardy organisms like polar species and deep-sea fish might have a chance, and humans could rely on alternative energy sources. But here's the catch. To find enough heat to sustain life, we need to look for a black hole that's a thousand times heavier than our sun. Currently, our sun provides us with 174 quadrillion watts of energy. However, even a black hole with a mass of a thousand suns would only give us around 14.7 million watts, over a billion times less. And sure, the atmosphere would be colder and more hostile than what we're used to, but it's still a more optimistic scenario for life. Despite the difficult conditions, astrophysicists believe that life near a black hole is possible, especially since they predict that eventually humanity will have to migrate from Earth. And it is quite possible that the choice of a new place will fall on the orbits of black holes, especially when all the stars go out, which is unlikely to happen in the next 100 trillion years. However, the mysteries of black holes do not stop there. The long-standing scientific enigma of what happens to matter as it passes through the event horizon and enters the black hole remains unsolved. So what happens to matter when it enters the event horizon of a black hole? Imagine a monster in a dark room that you can't see because it's so dark. All you know is that everything that goes too close to it vanishes without a trace. That monster is the equivalent to a black hole in space. It is so huge and has such a powerful gravity that even light cannot escape if it gets too close. It's like a huge vacuum cleaner, sucking up everything in its path. Consider tossing a ball into the air. Due to the gravity of the Earth, it will ultimately fall back to the ground. But what if you really toss it hard? It may move further from the Earth, but it will ultimately halt and fall back. The same phenomena happens in space, except with stars instead of planets. If a star is ejected out of its galaxy at a fast enough speed, it will ultimately slow down and be drawn towards the galaxy's core. And if that core is a black hole, the star will be pulled in and vanish forever. But what happens when the star passes over the event horizon and falls into the black hole? It's as though you've fallen into a deep well with no way out. As the star approaches the black hole's center, the gravitational attraction becomes greater and stronger. It eventually disintegrates into a jet of gas and particles that spirals around the black hole. This is known as an accretion disk and looks like a massive whirlpool of material being drawn into a black hole. The gas and dust in the accretion disk heats up and generates X-rays and other high-energy radiation as it approaches the center of the black hole. Yes, that's exactly what I was talking about earlier. Scientists use this information to study and detect black holes, even if they can't see them directly. Well. It looks like once we enter a black hole event's horizon, there's no turning back. But there is a possibility, though rare, for matter to escape. According to Hawking's theory, black holes can produce energy particles known as Hawking radiation. These particles pull away energy from the black hole as they escape, causing it to lose mass over time. I mean, black holes can also disappear. Stephen Hawking introduced this theory in the 1970s, and it has since become one of the most groundbreaking theories in contemporary physics. If a black hole loses enough mass, it will ultimately evaporate, leaving nothing but a blast of energy behind. It's like a drop of water evaporating and dissolving into the air in a boiling pot. This may appear to be science fiction, yet it is a real possibility supported by scientific facts. As an example of the exit of matter from a black hole, this is the collision of two virtual particles just beyond the event horizon. 
Virtual particles are particles that form and destroy each other almost instantly. And in this case, one of the particles falls into the black hole while the other escapes. The energy imbalance caused by this collision makes the black hole emit energy and progressively lose mass, allowing matter to escape. The faster a black hole disappears, the smaller it is. A black hole with the mass of the Earth would take approximately 10 to the 67th power years to evaporate, while a black hole with the mass of a small asteroid, say one kilometer in diameter, would take only around 10 to the 33rd powers years to evaporate. This may appear to be an extremely lengthy time, but keep in mind that black holes are extremely long-lasting and can exist for billions of years. For example, the black hole at the center of our galaxy, Sagittarius A asterisk, is estimated to have a mass of about 4 million times that of the Sun. It is located about 26,000 light-years away from Earth, in the direction of the constellation Sagittarius. Scientists estimate that Sagittarius A asterisk is approximately 4.5 billion years old, which is about the same age as our Sun. Despite its age, this black hole is still alive and well, and is predicted to persist for billions of years longer. Don't be intimidated by the huge numbers linked with black holes. They have the ability to persist for much longer than we can conceive. But here's where things get really mind-bending. As a black hole loses mass and gets smaller, there's a theoretical possibility that it could trigger an event called vacuum decay. Imagine this. As a black hole loses more and more mass, it could reach a point where a true vacuum, which is the lowest possible energy state of the universe, forms inside it. And when that happens, hold on to your hats, because it could be catastrophic. A true vacuum has the potential to release an enormous amount of energy from the false vacuum that makes up our current universe. Existing matter could collapse as a result of this release of energy, and the fundamental principles of physics as we know them could be utterly reversed. It would be analogous to a universal scale boiling of a superheated liquid in which atoms and particles are ripped apart and cannot be reassembled. It's a mind-boggling concept that calls into question our entire understanding of reality. The scariest aspect is that even if we knew about this vacuum decay in advance, there would be no way to avoid it. It's a potential apocalypse that could result in the formation of a new world with a true vacuum, where the laws of physics as we know them would cease to exist. But is everything so with the laws of physics now? For example, to escape from a black hole, you need to move much faster than the speed of light. This is impossible according to our current understanding of the laws of physics, and therefore anything that enters a black hole is considered to be trapped in its event horizon and unable to escape. While the possibility of matter escaping from a black hole is uncommon and insignificant, it is analogous to attempting to break free from a powerful magnet. Matter that enters the event horizon of a black hole can leave it, thanks to unusual and tiny processes such as hawking radiation and collisions of virtual particles. According to science writer Amanda Gafter, when you reach the event horizon, which is the point of no return, something truly stunning happens. From the perspective of an outside observer, it would seem as though you freeze in one place, along with any other objects or planets that may be accompanying you. It's like hitting a pause button on reality. But here's where things get even more intriguing. According to the laws of quantum physics, you can't cross the event horizon because no information is ever lost forever. So, what could be a reasonable explanation for this apparent contradiction? Gafter suggests that the only possibility is an instant cloning of both you and the Earth. In one reality, you would be torn apart or incinerated by the intense heat near the event horizon, while in another reality, you would dive into the black hole alive and unharmed. It's like being both alive and dead at the same time, reminiscent of Schrodinger's famous thought experiment with the cat. And here we come to the most important question. What will happen to matter after? And what about Hawking's paradox? Stephen Hawking, in his book, Brief Answers to the Big Questions, expressed that the black hole information paradox is a significant problem in modern physics because it challenges our fundamental understanding of information and its conservation. According to our current understanding of quantum mechanics, information is conserved, 
meaning it cannot be destroyed or lost. However, Hawking's proposal of black hole evaporation through Hawking radiation suggests that information could be lost, leading to a violation of this principle. The black hole information paradox is a long-standing problem that arises from the conflict between the principles of quantum mechanics and gravity. Quantum mechanics, which describes the behavior of particles at the subatomic level, suggests that information is always conserved and cannot be lost. On the other hand, gravity, as described by general relativity, predicts that black holes can absorb and irretrievably destroy information, leading to a violation of quantum mechanics. Scientists have been working on a solution to this paradox for decades, giving new explanations all the time. However, the new study's author, Xavier Kalmitz of the University of Sussex in the United Kingdom, believes he and his colleagues have finally found a solution to this paradox. Kalmitz and his team propose that black holes have quantum hairs, barely visible quantum traces in the surrounding gravitational field, that store information during the death of a black hole. By considering the effect of quantum gravity, the team found that Hawking radiation becomes non-thermal and can store information contrary to previous assumptions. The researchers believe that the exact physical phenomenon that causes information to leave a black hole through Hawking radiation has been determined and that this information can be extracted, although current technology does not yet exist for such extraction. It is possible to test this theory, according to the researcher, by simulating black holes that can be created on Earth. Furthermore, recent experiments have already simulated and provided evidence for the existence of Hawking radiation. The proposed solution by Kalmet and his team focuses on the effect of quantum gravity, but physicist Toby Wiseman of Imperial College London argues that a complete resolution of the paradox requires a deeper understanding of how both quantum mechanics and gravity interact with each other. The current understanding of quantum gravity, which describes the behavior of gravity at the quantum level, is still incomplete and remains an active area of research in theoretical physics. Several other proposals have been put forward to reconcile the paradox, such as the idea of firewalls at the event horizon of black holes, or the notion of remnants left behind after black hole evaporation. However, these proposals also face challenges and are not universally accepted. So, what appears to be the issue? This paradox has implications for our ability to predict the future behavior of the universe, as black holes are thought to be common objects in the cosmos. Furthermore, black holes can absorb one set of particles during its formation and then subsequently emit a different set of particles through a process known as Hawking radiation. Therefore, if information truly disappears inside black holes, it challenges the predictability and determinism of the universe as well as the principle of causality. It raises questions about the reliability of our scientific theories and our ability to make meaningful predictions about the future behavior of the universe. The problem of induction, which pertains to the reasoning and justification of generalizing from observed phenomena to unobserved phenomena, becomes particularly relevant in the context of black holes. If the behavior of black holes is unpredictable and information can be lost, it may have implications for our ability to make inductive inference and generalize our scientific knowledge to other areas of the universe. Moreover, the idea that the universe could spontaneously appear from nothing and without any reasons, as some theories suggest, challenges our notions of causality and the origins of the universe. It raises philosophical and ontological questions about the nature of existence and the fundamental principles that govern the universe. If the universe spontaneously appeared from nothing, can it spontaneously turn into nothing? So, will tomorrow come?